What's up guys? Welcome back to Boost Brothers Garage. In this video we are starting a brand new project, one I am extremely excited about. And uh, Thomas f***ed me. Right in the face. Right in the face hole. I, I, I had it and then I didn't. In this episode, we are starting a new project. This project you have previously seen on the channel, just a quick recap of last season in Grid Life, David's 240SX. The time has come to uh, basically just completely redo this car, right? So the suspension is staying the same and the wrap and bodywork is staying the same, but that's about it. We are switching to a Honda K series, a BMW DCT paddle shift transmission, switching to Cadillac CTSV brakes, and adding a bunch of aero. So the car is gonna have, I don't know, 100 more wheel horsepower. It's actually gonna have aero, and it's gonna stop better. Obviously, that's a recipe for a more competitive car, and that's what David is working towards. So, we're gonna go over what we currently have and what our plans are, give you guys uh, something to be excited about for uh, this build series. This is your K series, right? So, where'd this come from, and what exactly is it? This is a K24 A2 equivalent. We're going to put it in the S chassis using as many of the K Power Industries parts as we can, including their oil pan. Uh, they don't have any mounts yet for the S chassis, but we'll use their rear coolant adapter and their intake manifold and some other goodies from them. So K24A2, what did that originally come from? The K24A2s in America came in TSXs. TSXs, okay. So this is the RBB2, which is the 04 through 06 variant. He's putting a Borg Warner EFR7163 on there and cramming it full of boost. Now that's the same turbo that you had on your SR motor, right? Correct. Okay. So just going to reuse that, save a, uh, a little bit of money, which is nice considering how expensive the rest of this update is going to be. Well, luckily Borg Warner has been a big help and their, uh, their turbo has just been great. I pulled it off after a full year of beating on it and the thing looks brand new. So are we going to make our own turbo manifold or do you have one? I think we're going to have to make our own. Uh, I reached out to some manifold companies. I'm still waiting to hear back if they want to work with trying to make a setup for the uh, divided housing because I have a twin scroll 7163. The manifolds that do exist are uh, V-band flange manifolds. V-bands on a Garrett and the V-bands on Borg Warner turbos aren't necessarily compatible. I'm really set on running the uh, the Borg Warner divided housing because I think there's great benefits with the twin scroll setup. Earlier we unbolted the valve cover and we did a leak down test on this thing so I'll have David pop that off and we'll take a look inside and see what this looks like. It's been sitting for a little bit so it's not perfectly clean but I don't think there's going to be any issues. It's a low mileage JDM engine. As I mentioned before this is the uh, RBB2. As you can see, it's it's not super clean on the inside. Uh, it is obviously a junkyard engine. But in Japan, I've heard that they don't do as many oil changes as we do in America. I'm gonna keep this motor as stock as I can. Some of the modifications I'm going to do is swapping out for some other OEM Honda parts. Uh, one is the, uh, the K20 Type S oil pump. That's because the K24 oil pump that this has has balance shafts and those balance shafts go too far back and what that actually does in a rear wheel drive application is interferes with the, sub, the front subframe. We're going to inspect the chain and inspect the guides. Uh, I may do new guides. I'm definitely going to do a new tensioner and then new front uh, main seal, rear main seal. J just your basic refresh. If you watched the season recap video, that we did, you'll know that the SR suffered a rocker arm failure, which unfortunately is relatively common. And David was kind of grappling with what to do from there, and that was switch to a uh, VVT head for the SR20, or just ditch that and swap it. With the K-Series, you get not only uh, almost a half a liter more displacement, you get variable valve timing on the intake and the exhaust cams, right? Uh, variable valve on just the intake cam, okay. but VTEC on both cams. VTEC on both cams, okay. And then 
obviously the K-Series head is one of the best flowing heads out there. It's, it's ridiculous what these engines can do. In, in a form, people are putting down, what, like 250 wheel horse? Yeah, 260 wheel easy. <clears throat> in NA form, which is just crazy out of a four cylinder. So with a turbo, that 7163 EFR, this thing's gonna be a monster. If you just look at the ports on the cylinder head, you can see where all that flow is coming from and why these are as capable as they are. One of the things that I'm most excited about with this build is actually what he's mating this engine to. This is how we're gonna put the power to the ground. This is a BMW seven speed DCT, which means dual clutch transmission, out of an F80 chassis M4. So I think this one was out of a 2015 or 16 M4. Um, it has, uh, 30,000 miles on it. it came out of a car in California and um, hopefully it'll be quite the experience to be able to drive a 240SX with paddles. Hopefully it will be a world's first uh, dual clutch S chassis. I'm working with Seams Legit Garage. They've uh, done these DCT swaps into uh, some E46s and some other things. They kind of specialize in BMW stuff but they've agreed to help me mate this up to a K-series so they're going to get me an adapter coming and I'm going to work with them to kind of consult on what I need to do to get a drive shaft made for this thing and also uh, in that adapter is the flywheel. That seems legit. Yeah, it's pretty legit. Uh, physically mounting this up to the car is one thing, but how are you going to actually control the transmission, the electronics portion of it? Is that something that you guys at Performance Electronics are working on, or is there an existing aftermarket solution? There are currently some aftermarket solutions to do a standalone controller. Uh, there is another ECU manufacturer that has actually reverse engineered the CAN bus on the other variant of this transmission, which was in like the E90s, so like the E9X platforms. Uh, they don't do the F80 platforms yet. Um, so there's basically two ways that I'm seeing people achieve control of these. One is to keep the board that's in the Mechatronics module and actually reverse engineer the CAN bus to be able to communicate to their ECU or another controller. The other way that seems more commonly done is to take this whole Mechatronics module apart, pull the board out of it, solder a bunch of wires in there, and uh, put them to a connector that then goes to a standalone controller. Performance Electronics is thinking about making their own standalone controller for these, but uh, to get the car up and running quickly, I think I may use um, another company's controller and uh, interface it with our ECU. And we'll be able to develop whatever code we need for our ECU to interface with that other controller or possibly our own bespoke hardware to interface with the transmission. I think this is one of the most exciting aspects of this build. In general, it's a super cool build, but this is just something that a few years ago, I just don't feel like any of us would be talking about. Like the, the steps we're taking forward, especially in time attack and at a grassroots level, is just so cool to watch and, and be a part of as well. Yeah, I mean, one of the main reasons I'm switching to it is because I had you to can't upgrade. can't up with Jackie Ding. No, I can't keep up with Jackie Ding even with <laughs> any kind of hardware. But the, uh, the main reason I wanted to go to it was I already needed a new transmission. You know, I, I was switching out the SR, so I had no transmission. I wasn't gonna obviously run the stock SR transmission with the K-Series. So I started looking at the, the other options out there that I was kind of trying to future-proof. It seemed like this thing holds a lot of torque, so that problem solved. And as far as being able to shift it quickly, I mean, being able to use paddles seems like it's going to really allow me to uh, left foot brake and just focus on driving the car rather than trying to heel toe and shift. Yeah, and especially with a car with a turbo, that makes left foot braking even more important. Yeah, and, and the biggest thing with, with the turbo and this transmission is, you know, you may be able to shift uh, really fast in your H pattern, but still, you know, you may be looking at, you know, three tenths to half a second to execute a shift. But when you actually look to like boost to boost curves of, you know, I've gotten off boost, I'm getting back on it. You know, when you're not using flat shift, 
you, it may be a, you know up to a full second, uh, 1.2 seconds before you actually reach boost again. So this is really going to have all the advantages of an automatic transmission for a turbo car, while also having a lot of torque and having lightning fast shifts that are uh, that don't require you to move your hands from the wheel. The 135i transmission, the what I call the E9X transmission, that goes up to a 1.0 uh, ratio in seventh gear. This guy, I, seventh gear is 1.0. Yeah. Seventh gear is direct drive in that. Yeah. That's crazy. Seventh gear in this, I, I actually forgot off the top of my head, but it, it's lower than that. And I found that with my stock final drive, which is 4.08, and mm -hmm. Some other available final drives that I could maybe tune or move towards. That this this gearing really made a lot more sense for uh, those tracks. Do you know how much of an overdrive this is? Do you remember? Uh, I'll, I'd have to get that to you. Yeah. I'm gonna say 0.78, but it, oh, so it's a drastic from yeah. from six to seven. There's a drastic. It's a highway gear. I, I don't know the, the six to seven. We'll we'll post the the gear ratios in the video. We have a solid plan for the engine. We have a solid plan for the transmission. Now we need to get rid of my open diff. We have OS Gaiken, one and a half way going in. I think this should solve all my one wheel peel issues that I experienced all year. Ooh. Oh yeah, she's a real beaut, Clark. I know, I'm afraid to drop it. <laughs> I'm shocked he actually took it out of the box. He's so anal. With the drivetrain sorted onto the brakes. Originally I had 300ZX calipers and master cylinder with 350Z rotors on the car, and uh, it worked pretty well. They're, uh, they're a beefy upgrade over what is the stock caliber, which is a single piston, so those move you up to four pistons. But I'm going to upgrade to 370Z rotors, which are 14 inch, and I'm gonna run CTS V brakes. And as you can see, they're quite a bit larger than the 300ZX. It's their six pistons, so hopefully, I'll have plenty of stopping power. With the front sorted out, I do need to find a solution for the rear. I, I have the two pot 300ZX brakes still on the rear. I'm not sure what I'm gonna do about balancing the front to rear or what I'm gonna do for a master cylinder. So if any SJSC guys are watching this and you have a decent idea of uh, how to integrate these CTSV brakes with the rest of the system, uh, let me know in the comments. Gonna need an arrow, David. What's your plan there? All right, I'm gonna keep it as simple as I can because I have a lot of other stuff on my plate to hopefully have this car racing this year. So I'm gonna start with a basic wing setup and a basic splitter setup in the front. And maybe if I get a little time, try to manage the airflow around the sides with some skirts. But I think the main focus is on getting something to make the vehicle more stable. Uh, the thing's pretty sketchy, especially at Mid-Ohio and Road America. Um, it gets very floaty when it gets fast. It's not very confidence inspiring. So I would be honestly very happy if I could just have a stable car, let alone a car that makes a ton of downforce. That's that guys. A uh, little intro into this build. Very exciting. A lot of really cool stuff. Some stuff that you guys likely haven't seen before. Uh, yeah, David's got his work cut out for him. Thanks for watching guys. Make sure to subscribe and hit that notification bell so you can follow along with this and all the other builds. What's up guys? Welcome back to Boost Brothers Garage. In this episode, you're such a dick. Just let me get the intro. Just let me get the intro done. What's up guys? Welcome back to Boost Brothers Garage and uh, a new project. Uh, God it, f balls. Sh ass. This first one was so good. Until it wasn't.